Welcome back to Fixing Things. Uh, I know uh, my project's been kind of slow. It's it's cold outside and and it's around Christmas time and it's hard to get projects going when I got to do a lot of other things. Also, I've been real busy at the barber shop. Um, what are we doing today? Well, I purchased one of these. Uh, uh, home surveillance systems off uh, uh, eBay and this one here is a uh, ANRAN uh, four camera setup now it's supposed to be you have eight channels so later on we'll probably add more channels to it some um, solar powered ones that we can put outside but right now we're just gonna put the four cameras up install this guy run some cable to it and the cameras are wireless. In fact, I already got the cameras set up. I'll go through uh, and show you what I did. But uh, right now we got the this the the head unit, I guess you would call it. This is the DVR or something. I don't know what the heck it is. It's 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 the head unit. And uh, we're gonna install this thing. It came with the. Uh, some stickers you can put on your window. Oh, it says it says thank you. I don't know if you can read that. Got my camera kind of far away here. It says thank you, boss. Thank you for <laughs> bringing me home. All right. Uh, then it's got the sticker you can put on your window. And they say that these things deter people from coming into your home if they can, you know, if they can see them. Uh, but usually, you know, in the middle of the night, uh, they don't care about stickers on your windows or nothing. They only care about coming in your home. And the system doesn't stop nobody from coming in your home. But what it does do is if they do come into your home, they're going to be recorded everything they do is going to be seen and you can you know the the police can take that footage and do an ID check and see anything maybe they even know who they are go to their homes and arrest them and uh, so it's a it's a good way to protect yourself and your belongings now you should have some good locks on your doors which I do I got dead bolts on all my doors and and everything uh, but uh, we're going to install this today, and uh, so what it has on it, it has a, a, a spot where you can hook a, a computer monitor to it, has a HDMI a jack on it, an Ethernet jack, it has a USB and a power, and some uh, an audio out, so, oh I didn't even know that, these things must record audio too. So maybe we'll uh, we'll check that function too. So I'm going to install this in my bedroom. That way, at nighttime, I can just use the remote, click onto it, and uh, see what's uh, going on in and outside my home. Uh, then it might tell me whether I need to have my 45 out or my AR out or my shotgun out. More than likely, it'll be my shotgun because the shotguns are usually better at stopping people dead on. Uh, not trying to say I'm going to be deading them anytime soon, but uh, when they come into your home, you got to protect yourself. You got to. You have family members and everything else, and when they come into your home, they're looking for trouble. They're, if they're not invited, they're looking for trouble. And you know, if they come in my home, they're going to get some trouble uh, because it doesn't matter what the, the law can do to me it matters what they can do to your family so it's important that you protect yourselves and this is one way that I feel that I can protect myself and others in the community because if you can get them off the street before they harm somebody you won you know what I mean so let's get started installing this thing Hopefully my bedroom is clean enough. I got in trouble for one of my videos. My wife said there were some things laying around when I did a walkthrough. 
that shouldn't have been. Uh, don't go back and look at those things. All right, let's get started. So one of my cameras is mounted right here. All you do is just screw it right to the wall. It comes with the little screws and some things. And I kind of like to hide it a little bit. That way people don't know it's there. And the power cord just goes behind the curtain. Comes out and plugs into the outlet. And it's shining. Here I'll show you the view. It's shining right on my front door. I back that out. It's way too much. So it shines right on my front door when they're coming in. There's a little button. My second camera is right here at my back door. A lot of times, uh, intruders like to come in through the back door if you know what I mean they don't like to come through the front door because people can be seeing them but sometimes in the back door people got fences up and everything and it seems to be a, a hideaway so I got it up high over top of the refrigerator in my my walk-in area and I'll, I'll I'll pan this camera around and I got a sliding glass glass door here in my back but not only that over across the the way there on the other side I got my sh one of my sheds let's see if I can't zoom it in I got another one mounted right there so that one there has a little hole drilled in the siding and it goes through and the the same uh, power strip that I have my uh, uh, battery charger tied into that little camera which doesn't draw any hardly any juice it's plugged in right into that and so that's that's the other one so it gives me a picture of of who's coming up my driveway now my fourth camera is right here in my bedroom and it's also above a set of a window in a drapery and the cord is hidden behind the drapes goes down and is plugged in behind my dresser and I set this one here so if anyone is coming in the bedroom it shows a, a it shows a, this view right here maybe a little further out view I don't know it kind of shows a view like that which gets them walking into the room where a lot of people keep their valuables so where I'm gonna mount this is right over here I'm gonna mount it behind my TV set because it doesn't need to be seen there's no real user interface on it I'm gonna mount it right behind right there there's a mouse that comes with it you can plug and unplug and then I'm gonna run the cord up go through the roof and over to my I'll show you over to my uh, um, router that way it has Wi-Fi access let's go over here and take a look at that so this is my utility room and this is where my Wi-Fi wi internet access comes in the cable comes in down below here comes through the wall from the outside which is a, a box outside also and this box here is uh, it's like a router but it's it's for the, um, the 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 little dinky wired fiber optic and this one here is the Wi-Fi box and it has the router that you plug into so we're gonna come in through the ceiling right about here somewhere and come down and plug into it all the way from where the TV is in my bedroom so it's approximately 15 to 20 feet maybe a little more not not more than 20 but 15 16 18 feet and I bought a 25 foot uh, cat 6 wire to mount into it 
So let's get started on the install. So here's the unit. Comes with an instruction book. And it's got some uh, on screen programming that you need to do. You got to talk to it about your router, talk to it about some other things. Tells you how to hook it up, how to program everything, and you got it. Also, will talk to your telephone, your phone, your your mobile phone. Comes with a mouse for programming. Then you just take the mouse off, put it back in its box. But you want to have the mouse, the thing mounted far enough to where you can have access. To, you don't want to be can't do your mouse like this. Got to be sitting on top of something. So it's got probably looks like about a six foot cable on it. So let's go let's go mount this up. Oh, here's the power cord for that. So if you notice, I don't have any cables except two power cords runs my TV. That's because I do everything on a fire stick or anything that's already built in Wi-Fi on the TV. Um, so to plug one more thing in, which I already have two things in there, I'm going to have to mount a little power strip back behind there and just have one cord now. Just have one cord plugged into this. Then, I got a little strip here that my wife used to uh, hang something here at one time maybe it was a picture or something but we're gonna put this in like this and it just be sitting on that on a little the little thing and it should hold it up and I'll put a zip tie on it so it doesn't uh, come off we're gonna hook all our power cords into the, the power strip thingy 25 foot cat 5 cable is going to go up so there's still only going to be two cables going up the power strip and the cat 5 cable then it's going to go across my attic and down into uh, my utility room so we're probably going to go up to the utility room and we'll use uh, fish sticks so we'll shove the put this cable tape it to a fish stick push the fish stick up through. I'll show you what fish sticks are if you don't know what they are. If you don't have them and you like running cables it, or you want to make running cables easier, fish sticks are the way to do it. And we'll, I'll show you how to use the fish sticks. But here's the 25 foot. I got this at Wally World and it was like, like seven bucks or something like that for 25 feet. You can't get that. That is cheap. That's dirt cheap. So and then we got to put a Wi-Fi uh, HDMI connector uh, from the box to one of the inputs on the TV. That way you can view it. And uh, and then we'll just pull down the mouse, squeaky, squeaky, squeak, 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 and check. You know, you can click on to all the different uh, cameras or watch all of them at one time. Let's get started. I got to go out and get a ladder. That's recording. Still got to get used to that Canon M50. All right, these are fish sticks. I got these are my Harper Freight ones. I got two sets of these things. Uh, I do have a set of uh, uh, they're not Kleins or the other ones. Anyways, Greenlee, and uh, but. Um, they're very expensive and they're real stiff. And for this application, I like using the cheap, flimsy ones. And I'll show you why. So they have little screw in connectors on there, right here. And you put one in on top of the other. 
And these ones here are really flexible, where the other ones are real stiff. And so the where I'm drilling at, the roof is only about that far away. So it would go up and hit, and you'd have to have a real steep angle to, to get them in. But I'm up against the wall on the other side, so the stiff ones wouldn't be that good where these soft, bendable ones will slide right in and go right over to where uh, I need it towards the TV. So I'll show you how we do this. First thing is we take the 25 foot HDMI. Now for your application you might use 50 feet, 10 feet, 4 feet, depends on what your application. You got to get it back to your router. Or you can mount a little uh, monitor or something right next to your thing because you're going to be able to access this off your, cell, off your cell phone anyways on a smartphone. So from anywhere in the world you can go back to your house and see all your cameras and what's going on. In fact, this system will alert you when someone is in your house. It, it's supposed to be designed where if your dogs are in there it won't pick up your dogs unless your dog's a giant. My dogs are just little dinky, you know, feet muffs. But it's designed to pick up a human. So the best thing to do is when you get it open is to take this like this. This is how you do it. Grab it like this and then you just fling it. Hopefully I won't hit the camera. And you want to get all the little kinks out of it. Because when you're pushing it up in the air, you don't want to be unrolling it while that happens. Then you tape with electrical tape. You don't want to use masking tape. You don't want to use scotch tape. You want to use electrical tape because electrical tape comes off easy. And you're just going to tape that to your fish stick. Doesn't take too much. Put a little bit around the head. Not much. And now we'll be able to push the fish stick through the hole of the sheetrock and towards where my TV is on the other side. All right? Sounds simple, right? Let's find out. Sometimes these things don't want to kind of go where you want them to go. The rigid ones are better if you have the space. So this is a 12 foot section of house. I got five foot of bathroom to get over top of. So each section of rod is about three feet. So now we got two sections, that's about six feet, maybe a little more. I'm a shorty, so. Now my furnace is off. So now, if I put that across there, I still don't have enough to make it. One more rod will probably get it. Now if I was fish sticking up through a wall, I would tape these sections together. Because sometimes when they get stuck down in the wall, you're twisting and pulling and, and these things can come unscrewed and you'll lose your fish stick especially the high dollar like the green leaves or the Kleins and stuff like that alright that's it so now I got all this fish stick 
It's a lot. I'll probably knock stuff off the counter with it. Pastor Bill, you were a master electrician, yet you using green, you using Harbor Freight. I'm gonna tell you why I use Harbor Freight. One, these are really slinky. They're they're thin and, and wobbly. I like that, and they have they're good for getting down walls and in tight spots. Number two is it's very cheap. So if I lose a $79 fish stick down a wall, man, I'm out $79 and you can't get it out. But this whole section right is 30 something feet for like 10 bucks. And only one fish stick is like 70 bucks of the 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 name brand. I can go buy seven of these 30 feet ones if I lose one little stick down the wall for the price of one stick. So it's a very good valuable and you know something I've only broke one of these. Matter of fact it, uh, if I'm not mistaken it was my boss um, Rebel who uh, broke the tip off. And he said he was so sorry and I said man it's okay because I'll just use that for the one you tape the things to. It's probably down inside there and I still use it today. So, and you know, I've only lost a few of these sticks. So, I'm glad it's not my expensive ones. I, I didn't even keep my expensive ones in the truck. They were only for when I needed them. So, let's get over here and put this in. Hopefully the furnace won't kick on while I'm in here. I don't have my ladder open all the way. I'm prone to falling off ladders. I know that there's something, a nailer here, and a joist right here. So, right here, you hear a difference? See, this right here. is better than those things you put up against the wall. Use your ear. You're supposed to be men. There's a nailer there. I want to stay away from that. Here to change. Empty. There's another one right here. So I should be good right here. Oh Lord, don't let me hit no, in Jesus' name, electric wire. Now my fish sticks fell down. I gotta go down there and pick them up. That was my drill bit. Note to oneself, tighten the chuck up. Oh, hopefully it didn't fall all the way down there. It did. You can also use a knife that was sitting there that I used to cut the dog food bags open. Since you already got your hole. Let's try that. It's 
okay for all the dust to get on the electrical junk. That's a wise tail, I think. Pushing on insulation. There it goes. Over. get we want to leave a little bit it's got more than enough to make it to where we got to go so let's get over there and see if we can find it Remodeling the house. Oh yeah, I think I got a hole right here. I put a light switch for up in the attic. Now this should be inside. This should be the temperature of the outside. Oh yeah, it's cold. Look at that. Look at that. No, uh, the fish stick doesn't come over here. Whoa. I'm really close to the fan blades. Let's get up there. I guess I could turn the fan off. Alright, let's put you up in there. So, right over there, somewhere, that's the wall, I guess I gotta zoom you in, the lens is not, right there where the chimney is. You can see it. It's, it's only about eight feet away. So I'm going to see if I can't get up in there and get to it. Alright, don't fall. I guess I should have brought the eight foot ladder in. I 
I've got it. I had to get Carol up here to clean. Actually, at one time I, I had this thing cleaned. I can't feel the ladder. Should have used the eight foot ladder. If I fall, don't laugh. I am prone to falling. That's why I'm busted up. All right, I see the ladder. My toe is on it. There she is. Grab this electrical thing. What is this thing called? And grab the power supply for the for the head unit DVDBGCR thing thing of a G. And watch out for the fan. Plug the TV in. Plug the fire stick in. Plug that power supply in. Make sure the power cable goes all the way down there. Drop that to where it sits on top of the, the bracket. Make your cables nice and neat. Now up there is done. The system is real, real simple. So let's pull the DVR. There's the power wire. Power wire oh, goes in this hole. So right now it's not getting power because the power strip is not turned on. Alright. Let me see if I can't reach the power strip button. Uh. There we go. So right now this thing is looking for those cameras. And then it will the lights will flick on. There it goes. She's recording right now. She's recording. So we're going to plug in the Cat5 cable. Make a little service loop. That wasn't supposed to happen. But I'm not done yet anyways. I still got to hook up. I, I, I still got to. I still got to hook up the HDMI cable. Let me go get it.
one short HDMI cable that I stole from the other TV set. So we'll plug this into this. We'll plug this into this. There it goes. And we'll plug mouse up too. Ooh, look at that, man, that's fancy. Got a little red lights and stuff on it. Here's the cable. This is all the cable I got left. Ah. Oh, got backwards. It's talking. I don't know what it's doing. It's probably sending pictures to everybody in the world. I hope that ain't happening. Someone's downloading all my videos. Alright, let's turn the TV on. And the first thing it should pop up is my fire stick. Because that's on my HDMI side. And that's what I got it set at. Go to my menu. Go to input. And let's try HDMI 1. Boom, there it is. Look, it's got a picture of me up there. Hey! It's, I'm talking to me, dogs. Here they come, they're wondering what I'm talking to. Alright, so, here's my bedroom cam. Here's my one going out the back door. Here's my one looking at the, the back door from outside. And here's my one in the living room. So I guess I gotta figure out how to um, how to program this thing. So it picks up all the cameras good. It even shows the strength of the Wi-Fi. So I got excellent strength on the Wi-Fi and the one in the bedroom. I got three bars on that one. I got one bar on the one for outside and three bars on the one in the living room but even with the one bar it's coming in great I may wiggle those antennas around because I I know what it's like to you know the rabbit ears on the TV set and they don't you know you gotta put tin foil on them and everything alright alright we did all the hooking up thingies I showed you guys how to do it Network settings without internet. Network settings get the system online. Okay, uh, however, blah blah blah. When you finish connecting and see the camera's images on screen, 
please click OK. Oh look, I lost connection with that with that one camera. Maybe I'll have to mount that thing right here. Oh yeah, I got excellent, excellent settings. Right now, let's just keep it hanging. Okay, I had to pause it there because I had to put my security stuff and all that stuff in. Uh, so it's not good to let that get out on the interweb. But we can do the now. We can do the generalized setup. So we're going to go onto the screen here. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe we'll zoom you in a little bit. And we'll go to System Setup. And on this screen you're going to have your general setup, your time setup, your TV setup, which it the mine's already is set up. It says Toshiba on it. I clicked it already. And it's set for English. Uh, it's got the HDMI, a high definition uh, thing here, 1280 by 1024. I probably got other ones on there too. But we're gonna go with their default setting. And it's got a remote ID. I don't think we're ready for that yet. And auto switch five seconds. So then we go to record setup. So what I did was I said select all. So let's go to reset. Turns it all off. And now it's back the way it was in the beginning. So we're going to click motion. So I want the cameras, I want the cameras to go uh, on when they see motion. I want it to start recording when they see motion. And then on the schedule, we're going to click all. So now it's uh, when it, no matter what day or time, if the cameras are uh, uh, on, they're going to record if they see motion. And that's pretty much what I want. All right, so the network setup. I don't want you to see that. I'll bleep that out or fuzz it. Um, channel set setup. That's the four. They're automatic right now. Um, I may have to go in and set up when I do the other ones. System admin. We don't need to go there. You guys, when you get yours, you'll do that yourself. General setup. That's back where we started time setup so right now it's 557 it was uh, about an hour off it's on summertime mode so we want to change that to wintertime mode and hopefully it didn't uh, change it and it's got this, look, it's got like when it, it does it automatically. That's pretty cool. So, three, it still says 357. It says summertime mode, apply. Okay. I hope uh, this helps you uh, somehow in, in setting up one of these systems. This is the 
get get the pronunciation right. A N R A N Anran. Uh, it's a four camera setup. I got it on eBay. Uh, it's a nice little setup. The cameras are high definition. Uh, they they go quite a ways. That the one camera that is on the the other side is is almost uh, probably a uh, hundred and so feet, a hundred fifty feet away. Hundred. It's going through one, two, three, four, five walls to get. Because uh, radio waves work line of sight, and uh, so it's the see if you can see that there, the Anran uh, system, and uh, it says quick installation guide. The programming probably was the hardest part. For some people, maybe running the wire across the attic, or down through a crawl space, or through a wall, or or maybe you don't have to. Maybe your Wi-Fi setup is right there next to your uh, your TV. Uh, but it was a fairly easy setup. And in just a few hours, you can have it up and running. Uh, for some people, maybe an all-day project. For some people, maybe an hour and a half setup time, depending on how skilled you are. For me, I... I kind of did it all backwards and I, I want to test it out first and and ran some stuff and put the cameras up ahead of time but I showed you the location so now when you come into my house you, you know how to avoid them you ain't gonna avoid my cameras that's for sure that's a fact Jack but as for me and my house we're gonna trust the Lord alright God bless each and every one of you remember I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I mean all things. God bless you all. Merry Christmas.